It just seems to be this time of day. It really sucks because I can't stream in the mornings. Um, at night, the internet is like this. So unless I'm going to be streaming, streaming only at the weekend, I don't think it's enough. Yes, I have resolutions now. This is incredible. Reminds me of 1997. Amazing. You know what, I'm actually going to overclock now. It only took me 45 minutes. Okay, let's go 1.375 on the V-Core. Maybe a little bit much for this SS, but you should see the temperature and judge for yourself whether or not this is an appropriate V-Core to be setting. Okay, screw it. I'm going for 4.5. Boom. That's something. I don't know. Yeah, 4.5 all core is a little bit adventurous. Um, but I like to go big and then scale back rather than the other way around. Um, yeah, Rave, are you, are you on Haswell or Broadway either? Because that makes a difference for X99, for sure. What exactly is up with your um, edition 10? I'm not on air anymore. Let's go. Change that. Shitty SS. This is why this stream is for mature audiences because I call my SS shitty every time I talk about it. I also curse occasionally. Um, Okay, let's go 4.4. 4.4 should be doable. Well, at least you got, got to see 4.5 in CPUs that it's not validated, but. That's another hang. I'm starting to think that um, this version of CPUs that has a bug in it as well. Yeah. Main boards are just the most finicky part of overclocking. I mean, I've killed a CPU before, but there's at least sort of a cause that you can identify with a CPU. I've killed RAM before, I've killed, killed um, graphics cards before. But um, main boards are just, they just die when you look at them wrong, you know? And sometimes you don't even have to look at them to, for them to die. So uh, main boards are just, I, I'm a serial killer when it comes to main boards. You might think Yoss is, but... All right. Let's just run GPU Pi instead of CPU Z validation. Can do. All right, let's do this. <laughs> Uh, so live stream 100. Uh, hopefully that didn't con confuse the hell out of everyone. The fact that I was playing an old stream as a as an intro. How are y'all doing? Uh, Z Deepa, you have a 1920x. Yeah. So the story with Threadripper first gen is that <laughs> stuff dies. Um, my streaming rig used to be an ASRock 
uh, MATX board. But now I don't really know if the board is dead or the chip is dead or both. I should probably try and RMA that before it, it's completely out of warranty. Yeah, nice to see you all on stream. Um, so the idea today is actually uh, just to get through 12 hours. <laughs> uh, I've had a few technical difficulties, let's put it this way, but um, live now, so that's all good. Um, yeah, and for once my internet is cooperating, so that's always good. Yeah, so the, the live stream I uh, was just playing there, hopefully the audio wasn't completely screwed. Um, well, I mean, it probably was because it's screwed at the source, but anyway, I was playing that through YouTube. Uh, that's actually the oldest stream that I still have a VOD of. Um, yeah, so that's live stream three from May of 2017, it looks like. Yeah, so that was that was three Mac eleven physics on nineteen twenty X, and uh, whatever happened before that, I've lost lost the vods of. So yeah, how's everyone doing? Uh, it's been a while since I streamed. Oh, we've got mods mods on the channel, Philzoid and White Shark. Nice that you're around. Don't expect you to stick around for the whole twelve hours, but here in Europe, so maybe you can do, um, I don't know, first few hours and sleep in the last few hours, something like that. Keep, Quick Mew, Duncan R, welcome. Tag, we've got Tag on the stream, how are you doing? Saw some nice uh, LGA 775 records recently from you. Yeah, so what happened? A um, few things, um, basically, as I'm trying to, yeah, for whatever reason, this camera is a bit dark. So I haven't streamed in probably around almost two months now, uh, which is a bit of an issue. So there were a few factors involved. Hey, Keep. Um, my, I was I was doing a lot of benching on the Apex 12 that I bought from Bullance, and it blew up. So. Basically, previous to Comet Lake launch, um, I was doing a bench through of all of the 290X benches. So one way, two way, and three way. Obviously then four way is difficult because I only have one 295X2. Um, so with boards that only have two slots basically, I mean, they have more slots than that, but for, for the purposes of 3D benching, they really only have two slots. You kind of need two 295X2s to do the four-way stuff. But I was benching through that and shut down my rig, turned it on again the next day and saw some magic smoke, uh, which is not what you want to see with a $500 motherboard. And it was worse than that even uh, because it also took the chip with it. So I have two ES10900Ks um, and one of them died. And then the, I actually am not sure when the chip died because that clearly that com combination didn't post anymore. But I put the same chip into my Z490 master board and that also gave me some magic smoke. Hey, Shmomo, how are you doing? So I'm actually, I'm really paranoid now. I, I sort of did a, did a check through all of my um, PSUs and things um, because I didn't really know what caused, caused the issue. Did I have a board killer chip that killed both boards or did I have a board killer PSU that killed both boards on one chip? Or did, was there some sort of weird combination of that? So I, my, I had a bit of benching like fail um, and then Comet Lake or sorry Rocket Lake launch happened and I got my board before I got my chip 
and I put the one remaining working 10900K into that board and, it tur and I thought it was a board issue, but I couldn't post above 3200 RAM. So I thought maybe there was some sort of weird inc incompatibility. Um, but actually, I also had a degraded IMC on that chip. So wh whatever I did, what whatever surge I had there, whatever really, really bad luck I had there, I basically, in terms of Comet Lake, I'm now j down to a dead chip and an IMC degraded chip and two dead boards. <laughs> Out of the four components I had, basically, there's nothing left fully alive. And I don't, I don't really know how I got there, but thankfully that chip didn't take my ta tachyon with it. So it, my tachyon's working fine. All right, so that is the beginning. That was, that's, that's story time so far. Um, uh, but thankfully I got to be involved in, in Rocket Lake launch. So that's really cool. Um, let's just make sure that we have all of our announcements out. Yeah. Okay. So the bot worked. That's good. So for today, um, yeah, it's probably going to be a little bit different. Hello, hello, Hardware Barbecue. Um, haven't seen you on the stream in a while. How are you doing? Uh, so, aiming for a 12 hour stream today. <laughs> Looking forward to this. Yes, me too. Although there's been a lot of technical difficulties already, I had better days. Yeah, me too. I, I've, I've had a bad night's sleep and then I had a bit of an issue setting my streaming rig up again and all my cameras, but it, it seems to be working all right now. So, um yeah why don't i have discord on my streamer that's that's a bit of an issue so in terms of what i'm going to do benching wise today i've got a doer behind me here that's from the, the rocket lake uh, rocket lake launch fill up that's what's left over. Um, it's been sitting for a couple of weeks, so there's probably 30 liters or something in there. So that's what I'll use. I'll, it'll obviously not last 12 hours, but I don't want to do 12 hours of well and two um, benching either because that's really tiring. But I'll basically what I'll do is, where are my chips? Um, I've got my breakfast here, that's, that's a good start. I'll find them. Uh, <laughs> I basically have, yeah, here we go. So in the system right now, as you can see, is the 11900K I got in from Intel pre-launch. And since then, um, I've bought a, a, a lot of three core, uh, six cores. So I've got three 11, 11 600KFs. There's one more on the way that didn't actually make it here on time. Um, but I've vid bin these already. Uh, can probably show you. So, yeah. Well, this is, this is nothing special really to show you. Uh, I don't think this is, so basically, what we were doing um, pre-launch was vid binning chips. Um, I don't have any of these chips on hand except I think this is the one that's in. What was it? This is the one that's in the system. But basically, um, these three are the ones I want to bin today. I basically bought them from three different. Well, I bought four chips from four different. Um, Australian e-tailers, so Scorptech, M-Wave, Computer Alliance, and Centricom. Centricom is a state over, so it took a bit longer to arrive. But so basically, I would expect this one to be the best. But we'll see. I'll do I'll do a little bit of Cinebench binning. I'll also Cinebench bin um, the chip I currently have in the system just to get a reference of potentially. Um, 
like what differences there are between the i5s and the i7s. But yeah, that's sort of the plan for today. And then I'll add into one or two of those chips. Yeah, that's the idea. Fourteen forty p per port. Oh, Elgato has a four. Um, nice. Is there? Can you send a link? Um, that's interesting. Uh, maybe on your news. Yeah, I use the black magic. And probably it was overpriced for what it is. So this is what I used for streaming, all my cameras and all that stuff um tripod and i use the quad link and it's quite i don't know i could imagine that now a couple of years on um it's expensive for what it does it does it does four ports um 4k but um twitch limits the max bandwidth for non-partner streamers to six 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 megabits per second um so doing 4K across that is not really viable. I know that YouTube allows, allows higher, but I just find that Twitch is a better platform for me at least. $350 says their suggested price. Okay, let's look at the specs. It's interesting. Especially now I have, um, I have a HDMI splitter, so I don't need pass through anymore. La 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 la. Okay, four in inputs. Yeah, of course they're independent inputs. Why? <laughs> I've no never heard of such a thing that's called an, a de dependent input. So that's kind of redundant. Onboard mixing. Okay, that could be sort of interesting. Video conference. Blah 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 blah. Where is the tech specs? Unencrypted. Okay, so up to four K thirty. Uh, what does um, what does the black black magic do? I thought it was sixty, but let me double check. Definitely supports more codecs and things, but yeah, Ultra HD, yeah, it does 60. So there is still a difference, but I actually stream at 30 because I encode on the CPU. Maybe once I get my 16 core running again, I can I can go to 60. But again, the problem with that is um, just the, the bandwidth cap. 11700K for te test bench. What did you have for t your test bench before? 2700K. I have a 2700K with a dead memory channel. Problem with the bias, what, uh, what board do you have? Okay, so <laughs> let's, let's hook up an OS to this rig. One of my many OSs. <laughs> Uh, where are we? XP, XP, Win 10. Um, yeah, let's just dial in. So this is the Tachyon. Um, maybe I should go to the retail BIOS. So it's got dual BIOS. Useless for SuperPy. Yeah, it's a little bit slow for that. So 
So I've got my breakfast here. I'll have to eat a bit on stream. I was already running a little bit late. Uh, so I've got a muffin. <laughs> I have no idea what's in it, but um, just pretty hungry. Nice to see all you people on the stream. Um, yeah, so one of the things that went wrong for today was um, basically um, a sponsor that shall remain, uh, remain unnamed ghosted me about giveaways and then it was too late to try and find someone else. But okay, it happens. Maybe they had their reasons. Um, so I've got my GTL on there. I might actually just let's let's do a little a little uh, um, bias run three. So this is the latest retail F5A. The only difference I actually know between the X1 and the F5A is I couldn't get XP booting on the on the retail bias. Yeah, I mean, I don't do uh, giveaways either, really. But um, I thought for uh, for live stream 100, I would give it a go. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe there was some sort of miscommunication. I don't know. Might still happen, but too late for today. Uh, G3258, infamous. Yeah, well. It's infamous in the sense that there were really only two, correct me if I'm wrong, but Intel only ever released two unlocked low-end chips. Um, so the G3258 for Haswell and the 7350K um, for KB. I know there's the 8350K. I don't know if there was ever a 9350K, but 8350K, the problem with it is it's a four core, four thread chip. So it's not really that benching relevant because for all the quad core categories, it loses because, oh, why do I have two hybrid logos? That's weird. <laughs> First glitch. <laughs> um, it's not really that relevant because it loses to chips that have hyper threading. Okay, so retail bias, retail chip, otherwise it would show up here. Um, so there's obviously the easy mode, just, you can just go in, into here under boot and go to preferred operating mode advanced and then forget about it forever. Um, the retail bias, it didn't work for me. Maybe you can f figure it out, but basically all you need for windows 10 is just enable CSM and go to other OS here. That's all you need for XP. Um, yeah, so there's a favorites menu, which obviously gets auto populated by the stuff that you last, last touched basically. <laughs> trust me. I am from the internet. Yeah. Yeah. I do trust you. So yeah, basically ever since Intel has been locking chips, which I think started with first gen core. Well, I think they were already, I mean, before that, it was just FSB overclocking. So basically, Intel has been locking chips, chips for 10 plus years. And the only low end chips that have been unlocked was the G3258 and the 7350K. Uh, so that's why the G3258 is infamous. It's also infamous because it's um, it was an anniversary edition, wasn't it? So it was Pentium anniversary edition. Um, we've had another sort of anniversary edition, which was, but that was a higher end chip. It was the 80, 86 K. Okay. So your favorites menu. Um, so what goes on here? So basically you've got your BCLK, obviously core ratio, um, cash, IGPU, and then all of your like AV AVX settings and stuff in here, your core disable. Um, so you can customize your turbo ratios. 
Uh, Percore disabled fiber threading still exists. Oh, I've never actually touched. What's POR? Maybe I should. And this is the new thing with Rocket Lake is that you can actually find your best chip, like even like open up XTU, find the best, the chip that's marked as being best in XTU and then um, like give it a higher ratio. So you no longer have to sort of just rely on per core ratio, um, per, per core turbo ratios. That's hard to say. Fiftieth anniversary of the forty, yeah, four oh four. That's a bit more obscure, though. Everyone sort of know what the, knows what the eighty eighty six k is. Forty. Oh, I don't even know how you say that. Forty oh four is a bit different. Just gonna do XMP. I don't. I'm trying to just spin the core. Uh, I'll stay at the same temp on the chiller. Uh, let's say 22 degrees. Um. Oh yeah. Obviously, this is a new feature as well. So, Intel used to always run the memory controller synchronous, I suppose or at least I didn't give you any control over it. And now you have gear one and gear two. Anything over about 3,700 or 3,800 can run in gear one, which is synchronous. Gear two is one is to two. So now, so you've got 4,600 effective, 2,300 real memory. And then this would end up being, <laughs> math is hard, uh, 2,300 divided by two, which is, 1650 1650 on the IMC. Uh, we'll leave all this the way um, it's that. So voltage we need to do fixed. I don't know, 1.4. The other difference is I haven't messed around. So my chips, um, do high memory clock quite easily. So I haven't really messed around with SA and IO much, but basically the number one um, voltage for your memory clocking is IO2 now. And I think it's called VCC IO OC on ASUS. It'll have a different name, but basically the VCC IO that has a name after it, whatever the name may be, 2 or OC or whatever, is the most relevant um, voltage for memory clocking on this platform. First commercial CPU ever. Yeah, memory OC, hi. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Keep. Um, and just to mention it, um, I did a bit of clocking on the Apex and the Apex did full pot just with the LN2 um, switch flipped. This board, it's a bit more chip dependent, so if you do end up with an with a cold bug, just raise sustain to 1.5. And then if it, if it still bugs, then you need to go all the way up to 1.6. No chip, no chip will, well, according to high cookie anyway, no chip will improve with anything under 1.5 and no chip will need more than 1.6. So it's pretty easy to work out. All right. Um, the other thing that Dino told me actually was that LLC is now a little bit different. It used to be that Turbo was always the like most correct LLC, the LLC that is most likely to stick to basically the the volts you really set. But now you need sort of like extreme or ultra extreme. Let's go extreme. Uh, yeah, just disable all this crap. Okay, I think we should be good to go. I'll just disable a few of the ports. It's a really nice clean board. I really like it. It, it posts quickly. It looks good once you take the, the gaudy heat sinks off. 
and it's Star Trek themed. So as tachyons are like something in Star Trek, I haven't watched Star Trek in a while, but that's where it comes from. So that's always cool. Extreme, ultra extreme, super duper extreme. Yeah, that's a bit of an issue. 1.45 and call it good. Yeah, I've had, an, had a different experience, but um, I've seen a bit of scaling above that, but maybe it's also a bit board dependent. Let's disable some devices. That's right. Particle that travels faster than light. Thanks, Dark Beat Peanut. That sounds familiar. I hate those plastic bits. Yeah, me too. So what they also introduced, um, but this was already in Z490, now it would help to actually attach the, the SATA drive. Z490, they introduced this, this similar concept to what Azus has, where um, when you hit F10 to apply settings, it'll tell you which settings you change, which is really nice. Um, no, it's not a Z490 Master, it's the Tachyon. If you ever need to figure out what I'm benching, just um, do exclamation point rig. I don't know why I just lost video, but let's give it a reboot. Ah, I think um, I might have removed Maxmem on here. Where's auto? Oh, that was, that was weird. Hopefully not a capture card issue. I'll try my other wind tent. Okay, so partnership for special uh, specialty streamers. So even if you don't hit like the partnership goals, which is like a hundred viewers on average for 30 days or something crazy like that. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Is there an application process or do I just reach out to you?
Okay, thanks. I don't really get it. I can't believe I'm having HDMI issues. It doesn't make any sense. Okay, it's per I mean it's perfect in BIOS. <laughs> the load up screen works. Okay. I switched like okay, that makes makes no sense. So this is the super light image. Um, not really sure what's different about it, but I thought I'd try it. I'm just gonna copy my Cinebench 15 over. Cinebench R20 is just too long for binning, and it's too inconsistent. It just it's very heavy on for a, for a Cinebench. It's very heavy on um, memory and stuff. I might actually already even have it on here. I'll, I'll go back and load XMP though. <laughs> rendering a couch yeah uh, it is it is um a terrible 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 bench <laughs> Boring. As long as it's fast, I don't care what it looks like. All right, let's load up XMP. It might actually take me 20, um, 12 hours just to eat this muffin, the way things are going. I think I didn't load XMP. I just set the mul multiplier. Yeah, I should actually clip that rant. I don't know what live stream it was in, but it's definitely clippable.
uh, here's my here's my room cam again. Obviously, I didn't didn't manage to clean up the room <laughs> in time for for this stream. That's okay. Another day. Hi, Tyron Dino. How are you doing? Okay, so the sad thing is my my um, keyboard is missing the F three. Um, button which is the load profile button it's a it's a bit um bit of a shame okay let's do io 1.45 and like 1.65 i guess on dram stream's good so far still in the first hour of uh 12 hour special live stream 100 celebration stream. Hey, Palzin. I should probably change, change the title to remove, uh, The giveaway part yeah this is a hundred so I think twitch tracker lets you lets you look at like the first stream date and stuff Four thousand two hundred views, not bad. One thousand nine hundred. Um, where is it? I thought there was. Yeah, here we go. First ever stream was in April of two thousand eighteen. Five watchers, not bad. <laughs> All things considered. Okay, so we have XMP loaded up. We have Cinebench on the system. Let's just double check our GTL. Is all okay? Let's take a bit to load up. Okay. This may fail, but let's try. 5.4. Doesn't even start the run. And 5.3 is the turbo. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, let's do a stock, stock run first. Yeah, that artifact. Don't know what's going on there. Thanks for the um, gifted sub, Darth. Much appreciated. Okay, time for the, the stock run first then. Okay, obviously weird boosting going on there. I'll have to do, I'll have to apply an all core um, OC in in uh, BIOS first. Oh, Dave Green, how are you doing? Yeah, FM one is really really fun. Um, I have the UD4H, maybe we can compare nodes, um, okay, 50 all core, it's 
the tachyon uh i benched a little bit on the apex 13 as well um i would say they're they're very close i can't really say which one is better for xoc um on the tachyon maybe it's a little bit more difficult to get the really really high clocks for geekbench No, um, UCA, um, I, I believe for Windows 10, the maximum you need, the, the, the point at which you require start requiring maximum is something like 1.79. I could be wrong. It's 1.8, somewhere around there, you, you start getting crashes. On Intel, at least. It's, it's weird, it actually seems to differ between Intel and AMD. On Intel, I find it much less consistent um, when you need maximum and stuff varies by stick okay this is this is all kinds of fucked up Yeah, I think it might have something to do with my HDMI splitter. I haven't seen that before, but it's just on the one button, so I can't really tell where what the source of it is because both my screen on my desk and the stream um, are going through that splitter. <laughs> Underclocking. Hey, underclocking is harder than you think. Okay, so. I think speed shift is something we don't want. Let's try that. Yeah, the debug card, I think it works on the UD4H, but there are certainly some boards where it'll just show zero, zero. And that's not the debug card dying. It's the board not supporting that particular feature or probably it does support it, but it just doesn't output that over the PCI slot. All right, so we're still getting 50. Let's see if it holds it. Nope. Underclocking is as hard as overclocking, but le with less documentation. I like that take. All right. Oh, we need to enable this, duh, okay. That might not do it, but that, that will get us closer at least. Could be some sort of thermal thing, but I sort of doubt it. Nope. 
Where is my hard hardware info at? So has the tachyon gone retail yet? I actually haven't really been paying attention to the market. Yeah, that's a bit of a problem. That might be it. <laughs> uh, let's check our mounts. I do actually have a, a better Intel um, block on the way. It just didn't arrive in time. So this is what a tachyon looks like with everything taken off. I don't know if um, Buildy has uh, need a rag. Buildy has done a PCB breakdown on it yet. All right, so I'll put KPX on there and um, maybe apply a bit more mounting pressure than before. Hey, JJJC, how are you doing? How's benching retirement treating you? 850 Australian dollars. quite a lot. <laughs> Almost out of KPX, but I have a new one. Uh, yeah, so how much is the uh, Maximus 13 Extreme and does it still have four dim slots? Now the only issue with this is if I use KPX on here I'll have to use KPX on the, the three other chips as well. I can remember when a really, really good motherboard would be 200 euro. How times have changed. The hour is extreme. Yeah, but for benching, you don't need anything better than a tachyon anyway. A tachyon is the top of the line board for, for benching. 
But um, yeah, somebody, what well, didn't uh, Dare Bauer put a YouTube video up saying um, it's the first 2000 euro motherboard or something like that? I thought I saw that headline. All right, let's see if I can tighten up a little bit more than before this these um thumb nuts. It's odd. I feel like I need to rush around and do things, but I've got eleven hours left to go, so I should be taking my time. The only thing with, um, uh, what is it, PGA, L LGA sockets, is that if you over tighten water blocks, sometimes you can't, you it doesn't post, it's too much mounting pressure. All right, it looks like it's going to post. That's something. Wow. Uh, it's got a monoblock. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't actually connect my uh, peripherals. As you probably know, um, PS2 doesn't doesn't really support hot swapping, uh, hot plugging. RGB boosts base clock. All right, let's run again. Basically, the <laughs> temps drop by 50 degrees. Okay, but we need to apply our profile. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have uh, even connected those. I don't know, someday I need to, like, I need to literally just test all my hdmi cables and stuff it's kind of annoying how like a hundred dollar um splitter my old splitter literally died for a while i was running without a splitter then i got a good deal on a four-way splitter like a really really good splitter and even that's giving me issues so maybe i just have some crap cables somewhere 
Let's do a 52. I'm glad my internet issues are, are, are fixed for good, it seems like. I got, um, the issue was I was connecting to downstairs internet using a Wi-Fi bridge, and I swapped that out for a um, power line adapter. Yeah, it's still down clocking. This might be the one. This feature opportunistically reduces the turbo frequency to increase efficiency. I don't want efficiency. I want the clocks that I set. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure what an ARC ground fault breaker or devices are, but it looks like they I don't have them. What the hell? The other thing could be that there's some sort of AVX offset I mean, I don't really agree with Intel's methods if, if that's really the case, that a chip that's supposed to be stock 5.3 gigahertz down course, down clocks to 47, but okay. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, isn't it, that there's no single setting. Let's go 105. I'm happy with 105.
Okay, 4,000 watts. What do you think? Should be enough. AVX offsets here. I love the fact that the O1 enhancement still in the bias. It's great. Oh, here we go. Zero. Zero. Uh, that's a good question. So Gigabyte you calls it the O one enhancement. Um, I think Azus calls 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 it the extreme tweaker. I mean, what it does is it makes O1 run faster. How they do it? Not sure if that's even public. I know that on Intel CPUs, um, the nature subtest scales with FCLK. Which is this obscure internal clock that nobody really knows about. different to the FCLK you have on modern day AMT, AMD. Ooh, we actually managed to get <laughs> the overclock to hold. What an achievement. How many, did someone keep track? How many things did I have to disable there? <laughs> okay, that's weird as fuck, but yeah. Let's do 5.4. Okay. So do, won't do 5.4. Let's do So it might have been AVX offset or TVB. But um <laughs> Not sure if I get the whistling reference, but okay. So that's closer to passing. Let's go 5.3 at, no, the vid isn't showing correctly either.
Nope. Yeah, that'd be really nice. We were pretty short-handed for Country Cup 2020, so any help <laughs> would be great. Oops. Whoops. <coughs> Excuse me. I have allergies. Hopefully they won't act, act up today. Yeah, Z Z590 boot up is pretty good. <laughs> All right, I go to one point five. What um overclockability isn't that great is is it if um you can't all core at the frequency that the single core boost is at stock. That's worse. All right, so no scaling above 1.4, it seems like. Um, I'll see, I'll, I'll do little steps. I'll, I'll try 5.25. Um, um, All right, that's 5.25, I'll SS that. She will have her in for give me the right V core. <laughs> 65 volts, that's a bit worrying. I don't want to mess around with that. Let's go down to 1.5.
And of course, we always have to check 5.3 gigahertz at 52 multi, just in case there's something weird going on there. Excuse me. It's not COVID, it's just hay fever. Okay, so what's uh, Highway Info showing in terms of vCore? Same as same, same as um, CPZ. Okay, that was an odd hang. I'll have to rerun that. <laughs> okay, so we do need one point four five for five point two five. Blue screen, first first of many today, I reckon. Let's put uh, one of the KF chips in. Let's put in the worst one. Or the supposedly worst one. Chiller temp is 23 degrees Celsius. I don't want to be running too much, making too much noise and um, heating up the room and stuff. Because all the he heat it takes out has to go somewhere. See if we can kind of reuse <laughs> some kingpin. What's an electric chimney?
All right, chip number two of four. Start your bike. What is it, a motorbike or an electric push bike? Or what is it? It's a thing that sucks out hot air and smoke from the stove. I'm not sure I know what you're talking about. Oh, range hood. <laughs> okay, thanks for the um, translation into Aussie. So, JJJC, I'm sort of attempting here what you did last generation, which is bin the i5s. Well, you've been the i7s, but bin one core count lower. So, you last gen binned 10 700Ks. So, eight cores when the top was 10 core. And I'm and now that top is eight core, I'm trying to bin six cores. Okay, so this chip, let's be really, really, really realistic. If it does 5G at 1.4, I'll be happy. Motorbike. So last gen, um, I suppose due to multiple factors, people didn't really run the eight cores. There was that one famous eight core that Zeus ran, but I made the joke at the time that maybe they just got a 10 core, down coded and then uh, re-encoded the, the name on it because the eight cores were so bad. I hope it's different this gen. Um, a lot of my six core scores can be improved. They on like, at 6.6 .6 gigahertz on an 8700K. You know, I've never actually booted up <laughs> with this chip in or any of my chips, my six core chips. So it's running. That artifact is weird, but color me surprised. I really didn't expect that. Now is GTL reading V core correctly? What's the score like actually? <laughs> Would be an interesting, I've never actually sort of looked at Cinebench 15 IPC on this architecture. What's with the memory tab not populating though? That is a problem. Okay, not harbor bot valid then. Oh, it's 1.45, okay. Still though. Do 5.1. The artifact is, okay, I said it would do 5G and it does 5G. Blue screen. Uh, the artifacting is coming from my HDMI splitter. I'm really sorry. It's, I think I'm going to be asked this about 60 times in the next 12 hours, but it appears that Okay, so the setup I have is I need to have a screen in front of me with, with the actual bench rig on it, right? My streaming rig only has two screens, so I only have like a small OBS view and a browser. So I need basically to duplicate the signal coming out of my bench rig directly into a third screen, and that's what I do. But in order to be able to do that, I have one HDMI cable that runs from this um, bench rig into a, an HDMI duplicator slash splitter. And then two cables run out of that, one straight to a screen and another straight to the streaming rig. And one of those three cables, well, I assume the cable, the first cable is broken or the split, there's something wrong with the splitter. I don't know. I don't know why I'm seeing that artifacting. It's a very specific, weird thing. 
Um, let's actually try 5.1 at uh, 1.4 V core. And actually, let's try 5 at 1.4 V core, uh, which is now set. Weird. All right, let's, let's check the temps mid run. But like binning HDMI cables and testing them isn't isn't easy. So sixty, I think, is acceptable. Let's actually check. Someone else had the same idea as me. Just now, that's weird. 12 globally. Okay, let's let's actually look at this. Yeah, so my previous score is now 60, 68. Obviously need to improve that, only 26 globals. So, 12. Okay. Let's see if we can beat this today. That might be a bit of a push, but I think I can do this. Very nice, and it's only 2.5k back. Is it cold RAM though? No. Very sort of pedestrian looking RAM, pedestrian Encore. Yeah, I think this is on an Apex 12. This is achievable. This is our, our target for 67 globals. Let's actually say, I don't, I don't know if this is possible, but let's set our target at a slightly higher. Let's say we want top 10 Geekbench. Yeah, 50. So when it was, let's just actually just open up um, the eight core rankings as well. Um, when I was running Geek on the, 10 11 900k so obviously the rankings have changed a bit now um but i think i was third globally so safe disk had a had an amd run and splave had an amd run so obviously you know global rankings only take into account your very best score so that's why now it looks as though I was first globally until everyone else dropped their scores. But like pre 11th gen release, I was third. And first, it must have been obviously, yeah, it was like 64 3 or something like that it was first. So I was like a thousand off and I'm under 6.6. .6, so it's certainly um, possible, even with a not so great eight core to get a better run than anything that's up here in terms of AMD. Especially now that some of the other <laughs> benches have replaced the AMD runs. So yeah, it's, it's competitive, but um, I'd like to point out that Geekbench 3 um, uh, benefits from the 11th gen IPC increase more than other benches. So I didn't see as the same uplift in like GPU Pi AMD is ahead way, way, way ahead anyway. Even X265, even Cinebench. So the absolute, absolute best case scenario in terms of clock for clock IPC improvement in terms of the ranked benches is Geekbench multi core, single core as well, but that's always a bit tricky to compare. All right. Uh, that's cool that I have a target now um, on the six core side. What was I, what was I actually looking up? <laughs> Got so excited to see someone else uh, running um, running this stuff. No, I mean you can run an, run an overclock like that all day. You just need to keep pouring LN too. No, okay, let's let's qualify that a little bit.
Yeah, yeah. I mean, same at any core count. Okay, so so these high overclocks depends how close to the edge you are, right? If you have a chip that does 6.6 .6 normally, but you're running at 6.4, um, and for 6.6 .6 it might need 1.75, and 6.4 you're running it at like 1.65. I would I would argue that I don't know why anybody would want to do this. But if you wanted to loop Geekbench 3 multi-core like for an entire like 24 hours on the same mount while just constantly pouring LN2, you probably could. As long as you're not running at the absolute edge. Especially now that chips are soldered. So previously with the um with the PACER chips, you had to delete them and then you had an, an extra layer of thermal paste which can crack once thermal paste cracks you lose like a gigahertz in clock sometimes so then yeah gates game over but especially on the amd side with a with a socket heater nice flat ihs good thermal paste in there good um like um discipline about getting rid of the ice as it builds up yeah you can run it all day <laughs> but the question is why would you want to you know that's not uh it's not how it works as mass man would say this is the drag racing of um benchmarking not the you know not the 24 hours of le mans you know or a marathon okay let's get back to i i, I actually don't know why i want to go on i probably think of it again there was something i was trying to look up ah yes i was trying to look up um cinebench 15 specifically what a good six core score is So yeah, on LN2 at 6.7, my best score is 22.55. So what's 1900 like? Just to get a comparison, because I haven't run this in so long. So 1900, that's pretty rough actually. 1900, This looks like an outlier, 6.3, that's really low. It's kind of like a 10, 600K on dice. It's close to a 7,800X on LN2. Interesting, but then you have third gen sort of mixed in there, okay. Why is this score so low? Oh, that was during the comp. Okay, Windows 10 and all that. That is nice IPC game. All right, so score, we shouldn't worry about too much. Um, okay, what was I trying to do? So I was trying to run... So 1.4 still runs. Hmm. Now let's try 51x again on the lower V core. Maybe that actually helps. Because it got quite far into the run. No, I guess that's worse. Let's go 1.45, let's step it up a little bit and then see if, I wanna get 50 megahertz um, granularity on the binning. And I hope I can sell these chips. <laughs> I hope I don't get a big hit on the, on the chips. Okay, 1.45. $379 Australian is the cost of a KF. It's about 30 less. Let's actually, let's show you just the, 
the Australian pricing just so you get an idea because I know pricing can vary a lot between different locales. Let's go 11th, where's, where's our Rocket Lake? Uh, high to low. Okay, so out of stock, obviously. So you've got a, <laughs> oh, you can't see this. Okay, let's, let's go like this. Yeah. No, no snap, please. We know seven. Yes, so you've got your, um, your K, which is almost a grand, which is insane. But then you've got 50, 50, um, 50 Aussie dollars saving for the KF. And then the lo locked one, which is just pointless. Well, maybe it isn't with the, how little overclocking headroom there is, but let's just skip over that. Then you've got the lower bend. It's funny, they only show the gate base clock. So if you looked at this listing, you would be under the impression that an, that an 11, 900 K is a hundred gigahertz, a hundred megahertz lower bin than the 11, 700. But okay, so 11700 K versus K, it's 240, um, so that's hard to pass up. And then again, 50 bucks less for the KF. Oh no, sorry. Um, yeah, 50 bucks less for the KF. So now we're down at 600. So again, unlocked eight core, 280, uh, sorry, 290 dollars saving just by getting rid of the igpu and a little bit of binning it's not a great pricing model but okay um lock chip lock chip okay so and here oh it's 20 bucks so across four chips i saved 80 80 bucks by going with the kf model but then the question is does that hurt resale value to, to have a kf i'll see yeah, 11,600K. 11, 11, Actually, the, the, for, for people who don't overclock, the real value option is 239. If you compare that to what AMD has, it's like a $400 chip, Australian. And you still get two, six cores, six thread, um, six cores, 12 threads. Okay, so, uh, Let's do Cinebench. I don't think I'll see any scaling above 1.4. The other chip didn't show scaling above 1.4, but let's try. So we need to go 5.1. Oh, something's happening. I'm getting excited. Are you excited? <laughs> Weird about those th slow threads though. It's definitely on the edge. Okay, let's let's go 1.475 and 1.5. I definitely have GPUs to get rid of. That's for sure. Anyway, in chat, gonna buy Com um, Rocket Lake. Why do I keep, for whatever reason, Rocket Lake sounds older than Comet Lake to me. So I'm all constantly um, uh, confusing those two, thinking that Rocket Lake is 10th gen and Comet Lake is 11th gen. Yeah, let me hit me up, um, Dave Green, if you need any FM1 help. It's an interesting platform. It's actually one of my favorite platforms. Um, without a postcode card, you probably will struggle. But yeah, I mean, it full pots and stuff. It's cheap. It's got APUs. Good luck with it. And thanks for joining us. Maybe you can come back, you know, in like 10 hours time. <laughs> Uh, 
the bots will descend upon us and black hole the internet. Yeah, that sounds about right. Ooh, so do we have a pass? We have a pass. Okay. What's up with hopefully the memory tab will load this time? Okay, that's a real issue. Kind of want to, yeah. Okay, let's just um, download a, a fresh copy of CPZ just in case. Because this is 1.948 and 1.95 is out. Okay, that's loading. Okay, so what I want to do is this came pre installed. Um, let's just uninstall it, I don't want it. shortcut and the vid is sort of more close to being the real thing as, as well which is weird Well, now the question becomes, does it scale even higher? Okay, what I'll do is I'll try 5150 and then I'll also go to 1.5, but um, that's not even such a bad chip. So if you sort of try to extrapolate that a little bit, it might, 11900K did 6.732M and about 6.5, 6.6 multi-core. I'd be happy with 6.4 <laughs> multi-core on this, on, on my best KF. And this is supposedly, according to the vid, the worst KF, which is interesting. doing something <laughs> okay I'll just go to 1.5 but otherwise I'm happy All right, let's note down our 
spinning results. Time for this, the second chip. Hopefully this won't be, end up being the, the best chip of the lot. It's always bad when sort of demoralizing. Um, when you start out with the supposedly worst chip, but then every other chip is the same or, or worse. That happens sometimes.
All right, chip 204. No, I don't think Tachyons are um, limited edition. Um, let's actually look up what's his name? Scatter Bencher YouTube. So the um, the hell. Um, the previous like manager of uh, Harborbot, uh, Massman, has this this YouTube video, uh, YouTube channel, and he has a video on the tachyon. I thought the hell. Yeah, so I'll just mute it here. Da, 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 da. Oh. Lame ads and things. Yeah, so here there's a section where he goes into um, like the history of gigabyte overclocking boards and stuff. Maybe you can watch this later in the stream, but here's the video. So basically, Gigabyte has, has always put out, or for a long, long time, has put out extreme overclocking focus motherboards, starting the, with the X58OC, and then continuing on into, what came after that? Uh, the like Z87, uh, SOC Force, Z97 SOC Force, Z170 SOC Force, LN2, and then the la and and um, those were all retail except the 170, and then the 370 as well. I have it here, but that didn't go retail. But now they've gone back to like the model of the X X58 and the 87 and 97, which were retail. Uh, let's try 51 straight away. Matthew WRS, how are you? Better eat the rest of my breakfast. I came prepared, guys. Won't be running out of any food anytime soon. What's this? Piece of cake, literally. So Matthew, the the um, plan is a twelve hour stream today. Just about to tick over into the third hour. And the reason it's a twelve hour stream is because it's live stream number one hundred. Took me um about three years to get there, but all right, so we have a five point one pass. Which is not that surprising really considering this is supposed to be a slightly better ship according to the vid. Let's see if we can do 5.2. Yeah, it sort of looks like they're all gonna um, top out around the same place.
9900k delayed that's pretty hardcore i don't think i would bother doing that to be honest i don't see the gains and it's really risky delaying um a solar chip but okay it's, it's a free country <laughs> Uh, I was trying to do that. Okay, that was 1.4, so let's do 1.45. Let's do 5.2 again. Almost. Uh, maybe we need the magical 1.45 again. Uh, or rather 1.475. Is it a service you provide, the deleting, or is it doing it yourself? All right, let's try 5.2 at 1.475. I and mean, then what are you running it on? Is it water or a chiller? You can do it. Finishes, but it's quite a bad score actually. Direct die. <laughs> That's good, scary shit, man. I'd rather just uh, run something on LN2 to be honest, seems safer <laughs> than direct die. Come on, GTL. Okay, let's do the prio tweak and stuff so we actually get a higher result on um, 5.2 than 5.1. as unsafe as possible. <laughs> I've done that direct die on LN2 twice. Uh, once I killed an FM2 chip trying to do 8G. Another time it turned out really good on uh, 4690. Ooh, okay, that's a good score. Can we do 2000? That'd be nice. Well, anything Yoss does is um, questionable at best. <laughs> I wouldn't uh, pay any attention to the things he does.
All right, let's try a little bit more. Okay. Clamp on on Vega. <laughs> exactly. All right, just because I want to see, to see 2000 and I can't be certain that the next chip is actually going to be better, I'll I'll try hard a little bit. Didn't like that. It was boot looping. Actually, while it's booting up, I'll just quickly clean my hands. It doesn't really feel right eating something with thermal paste all over them. So I'll be back. Sometimes it posts without the PS2 keyboard being detected. That's a bit lame. Happens on the Apexes a lot too, though. <laughs> What's the half card on the couch? Nine eighty Ti. Probably not a good version. Um, it doesn't have a bio switch. As far as I can see. I don't know, I probably just picked it up cheap somewhere. Don't really remember the story. Uh, is this a bad IMC? What's going on here?
I selected gear two, so. All right, I boot up, apply max mem, go a little bit higher, DRAM voltage. That would be worrying. Yeah, exactly, lame version. More volts, indeed. It's always, it's always the solution. So they put um, an as media controller on the board up here, but then it turns out they couldn't get XP running on it, even though it has IDE mode. It's a bit of a shame. Trying to operate a bench rig with one hand and failing. And all of the IO two volts as well. It's a good board. Yeah, that's better. That's posting. That was weird. Z three ninety AI. Isn't that the boy that they did a a memory frequency world record on way back when?
Okay. I don't know what I'm doing here. Oh, Encore. I should do Encore. Encore will get me 2,000. All right. I just need to also install Discord on my streamer. Hello, please react to my keyboard inputs. Let's try that again. Let's do 48 ring. Excuse me. All right, I've got this got up and running at least. Okay, I think the way to go about this is to not apply the the ratios at all in case that's causing boot issues. All right, 45, 45, 1.65. What's a dark pro? Is that um team group RAM? All right, it's gonna boot, it's gonna boot. All right, may, may not have been the RAM at all that was causing the issue. Now I kind of want to go back to 4800. <laughs> This is that's just how overclocking works. Um, team group, I have I have a good kit here actually. Oh, I missed. So they're a little bit older, but they're still A2 layout. These um, T4 extremes. At the time, they were sort of the highest end uh, two by eight gigabyte bin. Um, what can I say about them? They do 4800 C14 1T pretty pretty well on um, 
on rocket that's what they look like yeah i like team group i kind of like anything that's i mean i'd like to try out more kits that are not g skill to be honest even though i'm still trying to get the uh um do sub sub 10 scores on hyperbot with sub zero g skill memory achievement on hyperbot so that's something i'm working on but otherwise yeah it's a bit it's a bit annoying how they're the only game in town in some ways okay what did i want to do i wanted to stay where i'm at but do 4800 ram but it was actually not even training was it okay we'll we'll just give it a try Yeah, it's so doing that same crap where it does the IA boot code and then 4C and then just boot loops. That's really weird. I don't really... Unless the IMC on this is so much worse. But that's okay. We'll, we'll stick to 4600. Come on, limp mode. Not quite sure. So limp mode is sort of like memo, um, memo K on uh, Zeus. But uh, I'm not really quite sure yet how it works. I thought you could just hit it, but sometimes it doesn't doesn't engage for some reason. Okay, Z390 Apex, OC-wise. Uh, what chip do you want to pair it with and what type of RAM? Um, and do you want to do 3D benching on it as well? Because the Z370 Apex does more or less everything the Z390 Apex does, except ultra high memory clocks on A2 PCB layout BDI. So if you have RGB, high-end, G-Skill, BDI, then you probably want the Z390 Apex. Otherwise, you can sp spend, um, save some money and get the Z370 Apex. Okay, so let's get our Encore up. What was the other one at? Four point one. So let's do four point five. And this was at 1.475. Actually, it was already 4.5. Let's do 4.8. Okay, it doesn't like 4.8. Let's try 4.7 then. Yeah, I just want to sort of wait. Quickly check my um, audio setup here. Uh, let's do. Let's watch a video. I even have a. Um, left right audio here that's interesting <laughs> all right that seems to be working all right one more clip 
this is my 10 900k uh 32m record 10900t i mean oh, yeah, let's not go not go onto the onto the uh, suggestions list as my um headphones are falling apart these are akgs these are so old akg got bought up by um harman or somebody an AKG actually doesn't exist anymore. It was a uh, Austrian, not Australian, Austrian headphone manufacturer. <laughs> okay, that'll do. Where are we at? We want 5.2 core and 4.7 uncore at 1.475. HD560, what manufacturer is that? I'm not really all, in, all into the um, headphone game. Not 7.5, that would probably kill the chip. Applied forty seven. Also doesn't like forty seven. Surely at least forty six. Yeah, Sennheiser can be pretty good. I want at least a uh, hundred <laughs> um, hundred megahertz on the encore. Can that be possible? Forty-six. It's a miracle. Maybe I need to step it up or something. Um, let's apply our priority. Nope. All right. Let's go down to like. 1T CL14 at least. Oh, the Z490 Master has issues with reboots. That's interesting.
bias is mature. I mean, it's one generation old at this point. So if it's not mature now, when is it going to be mature? Maybe the maximum didn't apply properly. Ah, my keyboard dropped again. Ugh. Well, there's your problem. <laughs> right, T4 of 1. Let's try 14, 14. Oh, okay, so specifically on 11th chain. Okay, that makes makes, makes more sense. Forty five hundred team group. Yeah, I mean if there's not a big um difference between in price in terms of what you can get used between the Z three seventy and the Z three ninety, then probably three ninety is a better board for that combo because I assume a forty five hundred rated kit would be um the new RGB PCB layout. We'll give it one more reboot and then I'll double check the max mem. Okay. I hope my kid is okay. That would suck if there was something wrong with it, if it was degraded in some way. Maximum did apply.
try a little bit looser, a little bit more v uh, VDIM. I I I really don't get it. Time for the team group kit. It doesn't make sense to me that uh, a Rocket Lake IMC would be this bad. No, I mean, Rocket Lake um, has a better iGPU, um, better value on the low end, better IPC and SuperPy and Geekbench, so it's far from a disappointment. Considering it's an in-between gen generation, the next generation will also have IPC and will have a, a new um, process. So I, like, I expected very little from Rocket Lake and kind of exceeded expectations a little bit. And for those who really need the extra cores or whatever, this they still come at. I'm not sure if this wiped the bias settings. We'll have a look. Good that I got the second kit out. <laughs> well, let's see if it actually makes a difference. Always good to test. So this guy on the uh, 11600K also did um, a PC mark score actually. We have the first camera failure. <laughs> all right, all right. Obviously some unresolved issues to work out on this um, IMC. Let's go on to the last chip. Yeah, IMC seems weaker. It seems to have some sort of 
VCCIO hole or something. This is the only um, board I've got at the moment for LGA 1200. All right, so results so far. Next chip is supposed to be the winner, and it's coming from Computer Alliance. Of course, it's all random, but you know. Quite tricky on this block, at least, with those standoffs uh, or the bracket included. Uh, it can get very close to the memory slots. So I have to kind of mount up the block further away from the memory slots. Don't want a conflict. So, four chips, uh, or three chips in, and um, you know, one thing I can actually do is clean, clean my sticks. just in case that was the issue.
so this is it the last and supposedly best chip Yes, fi um, succubus, fiber internet. Not sure if that's going to lower your ping. It really depends on, on the actual ISP's infrastructure. I mean, if you can get a contract that's not lock-in or a, like a month-to-month -month type thing, why not try it and see if it lowers the ping? Because it's so unpredictable whether or not something will actually lower your pin your ping not pin um enable xmp all of this 50 here uh, Yeah, it is liquid nit nitrogen behind me. About 30 liters of it. I'll be using it later on in this stream, so stay tuned. What am I using? So you can get this at JCAR if you're in the U um, in Australia. It's um, it's called Electronic Circuit Board Cleaner, aka Magic Spray because it works magic. Uh, it's brought back RAM six. CPUs and boards from the dead. What what is actually going on with this chip? Well, with just everything. I don't really get it. Maybe I forgot to lower my VDIM. Oh, alien dude positioning. Yes. Um. What's Starlink? Elon's internet service. SpaceX. No, oh, yeah, I hadn't heard of it. But how can you get low ping on satellite internet? Isn't that some sort of a contradiction in terms? <laughs> Look at this criticism section, it's pretty big. Light pollution, space debris, federal funding, similar or competitive systems. Oh, it's using some sort of laser communication. Okay, that changes everything.
I'll just drop the RAM f for now. I just want to see what um what this last chip can do. Probably should have dropped it further. Yeah, three out of three for the eleven six hundred KFs. Four overall if you count the initial eleven nine hundred K. Some pretty intense competition going on here on the E eighty four hundred. Yeah, it looks like it's posting. A great success. So let's try 5.1 at 1.4. Now if this passes, it already beats our worst chip. Good score as well. Five point two. That's not much of a surprise. Let's try it at a one point four five V core.
not really looking like it's scaling but we can still give it a little bit more Uh, that's disappointing. just in case um, GTL was screwing up a bit. I'll still try 1.5. Come on, GTL. You can do it. Nope. Okay, I'll try 1.5 and then I'll try 5.15. Um, um, that makes it tricky though because. Clearly this chip is the second best chip, at least. But it's just not as good as this. And I'm not even testing on the, the same conditions either, so. Maybe this the mount is just slightly worse or something. Okay, that just keeps getting worse. I go 5.15 at 1.45 volts. It. We've hit the three three hour mark. It's probably a, about time for um, a bit of LN2.
I'm so tempted to just LN2 this chip anyway. Because even if I don't if I don't bench it on LN2 this um, stream, I'll still want to see what it can do on, on the LN2 because it's it's quite good on lower voltage. Let's try that. Okay, doesn't look like there's much on-core scaling going on. Okay. What do you think, chip two or three <laughs> for LN2? We've got one vote for chip two. Okay, I can see a trend emerging already. Maybe, um, Maybe I'll just do chip tooth first, and then depending on that, how that goes. It's close, it's close guys. See how close this is? I mean, to be honest, I don't know what this chip, what voltage this chip would have required to do 5.15, but yeah. Okay, chip two it is. Where are we? M wave chip. Here we go.
Time to get the T-Rex out. This is the heaviest, heaviest pot I've used. Yeah, GP pots are really heavy. You gonna do dice or what? Uh, where do, do I put the little thing that goes on the end of the KPX tube?
What's going on? Armor flex tiles. Yeah, that's the way to support a pop GP pops. Get my secondary PSU going. Actually, before that, I'll take a quick break. I'll be right back.
All right, heater's on. Fans on. I'm not on the memory modules. What do I use to waterproof the motherboard? A socket heater. That's a, oh, that's the. Let's go sub zero. There is an LN2 mode switch on this board actually. Need to wait for some of the LN2 to boil off. I'm on the X BIOS and it has the AVX offsets in a different place, I just realized. Uh,
When are you getting your next LN2 white shark? All right, it's constantly hanging. Let's check for call bug. Minus a hundred at the moment. Peter's on. Minus one hundred and twenty.
So it make a little bit more sense to show that. I think you can kind of see my mouse wiggling around there. Minus 130. All right, it hung at minus 150. Um, and it's throwing zero, zero. I'll give it um, 1.5 VCC sustained, like I was saying earlier. Maybe torch it up a bit first. Get some more then. Uh, we have a post. That's a nicely glazed pot now. And it's posting. And we go again. Or maybe the OS has fried itself. I'll go auto on the RAM just to stop that from doing anything. Shmomo, what um 
Where did you end up buying your Dior? Magic. This is a sustain applied. Hang again. Uh, right. Let's go one point six sustained. Yeah, it's, if that's Aussie dollar, that's not too bad. Yeah, stats are looking all right, so it must, it must be on your end. No drop frames. Okay, sometimes it doesn't want to apply 1.6 on boot. Let's go 1.59. Seems like a really early um, cold bug on this thing. Almost like it's not going to go away no matter what volts I apply. But let's see. Let's not lo lose the faith.
minus 140. This is where it previously kind of went away. Minus 149. Minus 160. Full pot. Okay. Nice. But I have one of my displays dropping a lot, so that's a bit of an issue. All right, let's see what we can do at 1.7 vCore. All right, hung. It's almost like, okay, let's try top slot. I don't believe this, this voodoo where anytime someone tells me they're, um, when I'm asking them about cold bug issues, they're like, use, use bottom slot, use bottom slot. I've never had it work. Burnt my hand. Go on, T. Same minus 150 cold boot bug or thereabouts. Hey, I'm a Sci Max. This is the rig. It's just um, on LN2 now. Well, <laughs> actually, there are a few things wrong there. I'll update it.
Hey, Dr. Weiss. How are you doing? Still got a nasty cold boot bug on this chip. It's just a bit disappointing. Touch up a bit, a bit more. This is definitely nothing like the. Um, i9s I test it <laughs> thanks it's been a struggle but um, almost four hours in it's starting to get interesting in, in one way or another That's minus 110. Not too sure the issues we were having before were really related to the VCC sustained. So I'm gonna load the same profile with the same um, VCC sustained and see how we go. So yeah, for those who just joined, um, I ran through um, 311 600KFs and 111900K and um, which is the one I was using? I think this one. I'll just put it closer here. I think it was 1.45. So this is the Cinebench results for them. So I've currently got this one in the system because it was the best 11, 600 KF, 1.59. So you you busy benching 11th gen, Dr. Wee's and MSI Max. All right, time to pour a bit more. Might be even a bit too warm now for that VCC sustained. So graphics drivers are screwed because I relocated the graphics card. That's to be expected. Um, I was on just chiller. Chiller set to 23 degrees. Minus 140, 150. One sixty. So all my display issues were because the graphics card was in the 
Chip said slot, that's that's fucked. <laughs> Hi Cookie's like use the bottom slot. Best for, for no cold bug. It's the last time I hit listened to him. Okay, gotta get some more of that. Right, progress. All right, still a bit annoyed that um, the vid readout in CPUZ is not correct. Kind of makes it hard to know when uh, something's being applied without having um, probes attached. Okay, that's 5, 5.5, 5.8, 60, 61, 62, okay. Probably already means it's not a complete garbage. 63. Mm, Now let's keep CPZ open and let's do a run. Not that this matters, but let's do this. Hmm. All right. I don't like these random hangs. So with the help of the VCC sustain at 1.59, it doesn't have a cold boot bug anymore. Yeah, it'll just... sort of randomly hang.
I'll set Vcoin bias. I'm not trusting this. In fact, I'll set both. All right, time for another OS. I think on XP it was reading correctly, if I remember correctly. Try limp mode. Fifty five, good old fifty five. One of our favorite postcodes. Need to torch it up a bit. Yeah, T-Rex, that's all I really use. Um, some of the older boards, you might have pod compatibility issues. So 
I use the F1 for that, like 775. But uh, otherwise, I don't see any reason using anything else besides T-Rex. So switching to XP, so enabling this, disabling this. Minus one thirty currently. Right. Where's my W W prime? Is what I want to know. Um, It's not going to work, is it? Still not reporting the vid. It doesn't want to apply the 60 multiplier for some reason.
All right, I might have to search up, but um, I don't see any other way to get the new CPUZ and W prime on here. Sorry, I'm just copying the stuff across. Zero, zero. Good night, Joe, Joe Dagon, Dagos, Joe Dagos. That color is hard to see. Probably clear the BIOS. Data dead. Let's check before we pull down that we can actually apply stuff. Multipliers and voltage. doing things. Shouldn't have left that USB stick in there. I was wondering why it was giving me the new style spinning balls instead of the XP logo.
Okay. Actually, let's first put XOC in there. All right, that looks somewhat promising. Uh, what about applying the V-Core? The V-Core seems to be reporting better. No, not really. Fair enough. With all this zorching, the pot is nicely gla glazed now at least. Nice and fast. Let's try 60x at 1.625. All right, that's a result. Um, four hours and 22 minutes into the stream, we have a result that may or may not actually be something semi-respectable. Uh, let's check it. Even though I remember on the eight core, I was having massive efficiency issues in W prime. So don't get too excited. So my personal best is 2.74 at 6.8. Maybe it's chip likes lower V core. Let's see. 2.313. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. 2 3, 3. So it's so it's like an 8700K at 6.4 or better since this is just the first run and reruns help and stuff. So where am I? So that was um, 2.313. Okay, and an act 6.1.625. Yeah, but the scaling, so this is 6.2, the scaling doesn't seem all that hot, to be honest. 2.6, okay. Anyway, we'll just, we'll just find the max. So that's 6.2. Good old XP, none of that weirdness with the OS, from what I can tell. 
once I switch to the new uh, CPU-Z. What was my personal best again? Two point, yeah, two, two seconds and 74 milliseconds. That'll be, um, that'll take a bit. Point two four six. Well, fifty milliseconds from a hundred megahertz is actually not that bad. Yeah, those tweaks are banned now, W um Dr. Wheeze. They're they're explicitly banned by Hyperbot now. But there are a lot of old scores up with them applied, so that's that's the kind of gray zone that I don't like, you know? But I suppose you know, the mods were faced with a hard choice. And they took one specific um approach that I maybe didn't fully agree with, but I can fully understand. Okay. That's fine though, I'm still on low vCore. Um, it's going to take weeks, yeah, it's... Harborbot changes a lot. W Prime doesn't even get globals anymore now. So this benching is just like not really worth the effort. So let's go 1.675 and see if I can apply 64x. I don't know. This feels weird to weird to me how it... Ah, uh, the multi is bugging again. It's a bit frustrating. Well, let's take that opportunity uh, to do uh, 1024M. Oops. Yeah, I think BCLK is working. That's another option, I suppose. I think it's gonna post at least, so that's good. Or maybe not, <laughs> it's throwing 55.
Pot's too full to, to really do anything with it. Let's keep it retrying until it sizzles out. So apparently they remastered Diablo 2. I'm sort of looking at my um, list of follow channels in Twitch and everyone's playing this Diablo 2 Resurrected. Of course, I'm the last to hear about it. That's throwing zero zero. I might disable some cores in a bit and play around with uh, the Super Pi and Pi Fast. This could be part of my issue right here. Ultra extreme. I switched um, from the retail bias to the XOC bias and I didn't double check those settings. Still have a cookie here. Let's let's have that. This is basically a a food stream disguised as an overclocking stream at this point. White chocolate. Can such things be found on Harbor Bot? I can I can PM it to you maybe. I don't know. I'll have to check. I don't think there's a thread yet on Harbor Bot for, for the Tachyon. But the only difference is um, XP support in this one. Otherwise, the retail bias is, is good.
Let's try um, 32M W prime again with uh, our OCP settings and uh, LLC settings corrected. <sighs> can apply multiplier Just give it a reboot. So what's the last generation you clocked? 8700K. All right. Well, you didn't miss much. IPC gains were non-existent between 8700K and 10900KF, uh, RK. All right. 
So I couldn't replicate this run at 6.3, but LLC and um, OCP have changed. So I'm gonna actually go um, from 1.625 to 1.675. Oh, it's actually reading correctly now. I don't know what I changed, but okay. But it's not a blank the multiply. Uh, one can dream. I would like multiplier control, V core control, and I would like both of them to show up in CPU Z, please. Gigabyte, can you manage that? <laughs> One thing, I mean, the CPUs are all the same. They're easy to easy to full part. Um, they're all sort of roughly max out at the same frequency and stuff. Uh, but what's changed is the memory clocking. So everyone used to run, you know, 4,000 C12, um, 4,012, 11, 11, and 42, 66, 12, 11, 11, for those who had really good kits. And that's not really a factor anymore. Now it's uh, 4,800 plus at CAS 14. Okay, that was a bit of a delayed reaction, but I'll take it. So we're trying to replicate 63. <laughs> World record yet? <laughs> Uh, world record number of GTL bugs, I think. <laughs> I'll see if I can get maybe, um, Hi, Wilco. Did you just wake up? <laughs> so we've been going for um, four hours and 44 minutes. Is there a particular order, I wonder? Oh, okay, that was the other option. That was what was gonna, I was going to suggest. Either you haven't gone to sleep yet or you just woke up. <laughs> Welcome to Livestream 100.
please work. Yeah, I don't know what the secret is. At least it's nice and quick to reboot. And every once in a while, multiplier control does work. I should iterate through all the different possibilities. Open up CPUZ and GTL at the same time. GTL first, CPUZ first. Yes, indeed, we have a special guest today, Dr. Wees, and um, he's also a resident of Australia now, so it's pretty cool. Can help us out to, to win Country Cup 8, 9, and 10 in the coming years. All right, I launched GTL first now. Maybe the maybe the um, trick is actually to not apply volts first, but to apply multi first, and then keep it ticked. <laughs> this is very high level thinking here. Keep it ticked, then apply volts. Volts even show up in CPUZ. Beautiful. Now sixty. And keep it open. Let's see if we can do a 6.2 W prime 1024M. Well, it's not immediately crashing. But it is tra crashing on 7%. Okay, let's let's um yeah, uh, <laughs> let's um, do something a little bit different. Yeah, I think one of one of the issues might be that I, if you sort of untick multi, then it might never work again. I think that's what I'm starting to work out. So I'm applying multi straight away as soon as I get into GTL. Okay, let's do HD off, three cores. AVX off. Hopefully that doesn't run into CBB. Doesn't look like it. These chips are very power hungry. So I'm actually sort of suspecting that maybe my 10, 50 watt power supply isn't keeping up. And of course, mount is a factor.
Oof, that was a really late apply. I almost thought that was uh, just completely screwed. Okay, 1.7. Okay. 62. Is it going to be another late apply or? Yeah, yeah. Um, those work. Those converters work quite well for me, actually. Apply GTL, close it, then open CPUZ. Okay. But that's hard though because I don't. I don't really know what multiplier I'm applying. Like that, I actually want to run at. I might do apply GTL, not close it, and then open CPUZ. Share on ticket. <laughs> that was a really late apply again. As long as I applied. I haven't heard anyone say anything about PLL or C being good on this gen. Yeah, heater. Not sure what's going on with the graphics here. So it doesn't want to apply over 63 multi no matter what. No, I have a sp uh, separate PSU for the heater. Go one point seven
Hmm. Not really sure what I did uh, different there to, compared to the last time. But it wouldn't apply. Must be the biscuit, definitely. Okay, that's a new one. I wonder if it'll still clock. I don't really care if my scores are valid. One more try. Wait for this to fully launch. And then check CPZ. Okay, that's all kinds of screws. I copy over a new CPZ and I'll actually make a couple of copies so I can cons continually um, use a new copy of CPZ if that's really what fixes the issues. Seven G, I wonder if we'll um we'll ever get back there on Intel. Especially now that nobody's benching W Prime anymore because there's no globals. All right, uh, that's the five hour mark. Almost halfway there. At least there's no CBB anymore.
Oh yeah, that's really weird. Maybe time to go back to Windows 10. Let's search it. Just gonna go in um, with just cleared BIOS to see if CPU Z will load. If not, I don't really see a way of fixing that. Got one score out, six point three. Could be worse. Getting there. can do it. All right, that's something I've literally never seen before. I have no idea what's going on there. Maybe the uh, OS needs a re-image.
I'll load this up and go back to Win 10. And re enable all the cores. No, actually, could I could do. No. Let's re enable the cores. Maybe give it a couple of reboots to redetect the driver. Um, it's one of the issues with the newer versions of Win 10. It actually won't let you do 1080p on, let's say, this card, a GD710, unless the driver is installed, which is just insane. The hell? Seems weird. All right, next Windows 10. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. Boot.
All right, so that booted. Next step will be um, applying a bias profile. I'll just double check that. It didn't it didn't tell me it was applying a lot of changes, so maybe it was already applied, but then why was the multiplier at 49? Let's scroll down, Let's see what we've got. First of all, can we see the V core changes. As expected, we can't.
Oh nine. Not really sure what that is. Oh, I do actually have a second XP. It's like um, OS spinning going on here. Fourth, fourth OS of the day. Um, torch it a bit. One OS per benchmark. Yeah, that was the old days. Now you have Benchmade and everything can run in Windows 10. Even the difference in 32M is not great anymore between Windows 10 and XP. It's kind of sad. Need to automate pr um, pressing delete somehow. It's the worst part about overclocking. Press and hold. I, I don't know about that. Does it depend on the keyboard on how that's registered? Never tried. I think it's booting. Five D A A five A things are happening. Scroll down.
now we have uh, obviously incorrect uh, voltage reporting, but at least it's going up and down. As long as it goes up as I set stuff, that's actually helpful. So what was the 64 multi that was giving me issues? Let's try. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, the next thing could be BCLK. Ouch. <laughs> Just froze my pants. <laughs> Let's pour out here. Right. Okay, so yeah, um, streaming rig randomly. Randomly um, rebooted itself for some reason. And now I'm clocking the ABCLK. Oh, okay. Yeah, it just seems like a hard limit. Um, I should try and maybe run off a 32M anyway. See if we can load up our favorite little profile.
<laughs> Are you in the voice section? <laughs> Let me mute myself. Okay. Yeah, it does seem to be working. It's, I haven't done 32M in so long uh, for, um, ooh, actually, yeah, no, let's do 32M. For global purposes, I haven't done this Discord, second one in the list. For global purposes, I haven't done 32M in a long time. Uh, let me, I think it's on the 6600K still. My PB, Country Cup 2017. Ah, oh, memory, memory tab won't load. Well, anyway, the fastest run in the world so 5.187 oh. As I spill more LN2 on my arm. I really didn't like higher BCLK, but Let's see if we can get a few loops out at 6.3. Mm. So it's consistently working for multi-control now, fingers crossed. Um, Just as I say that, it stops working. All right, 
Uh, I've got to go get um get the right X um CPU Z onto this anyway because I don't have a working mem tab. Oh, so Nightbot actually just recognizes that as as the, the stream not having um, gone down. It's interesting. 